Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about lever systems. So a lever is a simple machine that can convert an applied force or an effort into torque. Uh, in biomechanics, that applied force or effort, we're always talking about our muscle effort. Uh, so the force produced by our muscles to move our levers, which are the bones. Uh, leverage is when a force has a mechanical advantage to move an object. And I talk about mechanical advantage in another video. And a rigid bar or in the body, that's the bone, rotates around an axis or fulcrum, which in the body is a joint. Okay, so a lever is made of three parts. So we have lever systems made up of an axis, an effort, and resistance. So the axis is the fulcrum um, or the axis of rotation. It's the fulcrum, it's the joint in the body um, where the lever is pivoting around. The effort in the body would be muscle effort. So it's the force produced by muscles that are moving that lever around the axis. And the resistance is the load that's moved by the lever. Um, so that's the weight of the limb against gravity. It could be a dumbbell, it could be a box you're carrying, it could be cables, it could be uh, whatever that resistance is that we're moving against. So the effort arm and the resistance arms. Uh, the effort arm, that's the distance between the axis and the application of the muscle effort. And the resistance arm, that's the distance between the axis and the location of the resistance. And in the mechanical advantage video, I talked a little bit about um, where exactly those are and what that means. Okay, so we have different types of lever systems based on the order that the muscle effort, axis, and resistance are located. Okay, so we have three classes of lever systems, three ways that we classify them. Uh, so each one has different properties of force, speed, and range of motion uh, because each will have a different mechanical advantage depending on how far uh, the muscle effort and the resistance are from the axis. Okay, so each one will have different mechanical advantage because we have our lever set up in a different way. So a first class lever, lever is the effort and resistance are on opposite sides with the axis in the middle, just like we see in this diagram here. Okay, so the axis is in the middle and then muscle effort on one side, resistance on the other. It doesn't mean that they're all of equal distance, they're not evenly spaced, the axis doesn't have to be exactly in the center. Um, all it means is that the muscle, and the muscle effort and the resistance are on opposite sides of the axis with the axis between them. Um, so this type of lever is great for force amplification. So uh, it's great for allowing us to produce less force but achieving a greater amount of movement or resistance um, moved. So unfortunately, the downside is we have less range of motion and speed with this type of lever. Uh, there's actually very few of these in the body. So our best examples are neck extension and elbow extension. Um, so in the picture here, I tried to show you um, how a first class lever of the neck extension works. The axis of rotation, would be um, right at the base of the skull where it articulates with the cervical spine. So it would be right at C1 uh, and the occipital bone. So the axis of rotation is right where we have that kind of hinging movement happening at the base of the skull. The muscles that cause that movement, the muscles that extend the neck are on the posterior side. So the muscles that produce the force in this scenario are in the posterior part of the neck. And when they shorten, when they produce force and they contract, they shorten and it pulls down. So it's, it's a force applied in a downward direction that pulls down on the head, pulls the head back into extension and hyperextension. Uh, it's pulling against the weight of the whole head. The resistance in this case is the weight of the skull and especially the more anterior portions. So the center of gravity of the skull is gonna be more anterior to the axis of rotation, whereas the muscle effort is gonna be more posterior to the axis of rotation. Okay, so it's a first class lever because we have the axis in between the muscle effort and the resistance. 
Um, for elbow extension, it's the same type of lever. We have a first class lever where the axis of rotation is the elbow, the, the humeral ulnar and humeral radial joints, the hinges. Um, triceps are, is what is producing the muscle effort, which and, um, it inserts on the olecranon process, which is posterior to the joint. Okay, so we have the insertion of triceps brachii, then we have the actual hinge joint, and then what it's moving is the forearm that's on the other side of the joint. So it's moving the forearm, that's the resistance, is the weight of the forearm plus whatever we might be holding. Then the axis is the actual hinge joint of the elbow, and then triceps inserts on the other side of the elbow at the olecranon process. Um, in a practical terms, a pair of scissors is an example of a first class lever. Uh, so in that case, the axis would be the point in the middle where the two blades are attached to each other, you know, and it kind of spins like this. So the point where the scissors are attached to each other is the axis. Then the effort would be the part that you squeeze and the resistance would be where the blades are cutting something. The resistance would be whatever you're cutting. So that's a practical first class lever. Okay, a second class lever is where we have the resistance between the axis and the effort. So it goes axis of rotation, then the resistance, and then the muscle effort. Uh, so just like with first class, we have very few of these in the body. Um, much more power than a first class lever, but less range of motion and speed, especially less than a third class lever. A third class lever gives us a lot more range of motion and speed. Okay, so in the body, best examples of second class levers are plantar flexion of the talocural joint and dorsiflexion of the talocural joint. Um, so I wanna point out that at each joint, we can have many different lever systems. We can have many different types of lever systems at each joint because the joint is just the fulcrum. The joint is just the axis. Um, but then when we're looking at the different movements of that joint and the different muscle efforts, the different muscles that are moving that joint, we have all different types of lever systems at all different joints. So like at the elbow, we have a third class lever in flexion and a first class lever in extension. Okay, so it's not, each joint is not a lever system. We have many lever systems at every joint. Okay, so in this case, at the talocural joint, in both directions, it happens to be a second class lever. Um, so in plantar flexion, the axis is the ball of the foot. So you're going up on the ball of the foot, that's the axis of rotation. Then the resistance is the weight of the body coming down through the center of that limb and down through the center of the foot. And the muscle effort is all the way posterior in the calf. That would be gastrocnemius and soleus and tibialis posterior. Okay, so those are pulling in an upward direction. So as the muscle is shortening, it's pulling up on the heel. So that force is going in an upward direction and is resisting the, the downward pull of gravity on the, the body in between the muscle effort and the axis. Then in dorsiflexion, so let's say we're on our, our flat feet and we're picking up our toes, in that case, the axis is the heel. The resistance remains the same, just like with plantar flexion. It's the weight of the body coming down through the center of the limb into the center of the foot. But in this case, the muscle effort is anterior to that. It would be primarily tibialis anterior. Okay, so tibialis anterior is producing an upward pull on the top of the foot uh, all the way anterior. Then in the middle is the resistance and all the way posterior is the axis. Uh, a practical real life example of a second class lever would be like a wheelbarrow. In that case, the wheels all the way in the front would be the axis. Then the resistance is the weight of the stuff that you're carrying in the wheelbarrow. And then the effort would be you holding the handles and lifting up on the wheelbarrow. Okay, third class lever. Um, so that's where we have the effort between the axis and the resistance. Okay, so like in our little diagram down there, we have axis, then the effort, then the resistance. Uh, this applies to most of the lever systems in the whole body. 
Okay, so there are very few first class levers, very few second class levers. Most of the levers in the whole body are third class levers. Uh, so these allow for greater speed and range of motion at the expense of force amplification. Um, so in the human body, we prioritize locomotion. We prioritize our ability to move and reach and be mobile. Um, so speed and range of motion are much more important to our ability to live and function and survive. Uh, we need more speed of range of motion, speed and range of motion uh, compared to force amplification. Um, so it just means that uh, we'll have to produce a greater amount of force to counter, you know, the same amount of resistance uh, compared to other types of levers where we have force amplification, so we don't have to produce as much force. Uh, so like think about your second class levers, think about plantar flexion going up on your toes. You can produce or you can move a significant amount of weight. You can move your whole body weight very easily in plantar flexion and you can load up, you know, like in a, a standing calf raise or something, you can load up a very significant amount of weight um, going up onto those toes compared to the size of the muscles and how much force those muscles will actually produce. Um, and I'm referring to gastrocnemius and soleus. So compared to their relative size and how much force they can produce, we're able to move a significant amount of resistance pretty easily. Um, compared to like a comparable sized muscle at a third class lever, it's not gonna be able to move nearly the same amount of resistance. Um, and that's because of the, the difference in mechanical advantage. It's because of the difference in uh, the function of the different types of levers. Um, so we have examples all over the body of third class levers, but an easy one would be elbow flexion. So we, biceps brachialis the effort. We could also add to that brachialis, brachioradialis. Um, but in that case, we would have multiple um, muscle effort. We'd have multiple effort arms because we'd have multiple muscle insertions that are participating. But here, let's just make it simple. We'll say biceps brachialis the effort. Uh, the humeral ulnar and humeral radial joints are the axis of rotation, the fulcrum, and then the weight of the forearm plus whatever we're holding is the resistance that we're working against. Okay, so in that case, it would go axis, so that's the elbow, then the muscle effort where biceps inserts, and then is the center of mass of the limb and whatever it is that we're moving. Practical example of a third class lever would be tweezers. So with tweezers, the two pieces are attached at one end. So that would be the axis. So they're attached at one end and then they're moving uh, relative to that axis. And then the effort would be where you pinch and squeeze the tweezers and the resistance would be whatever it is that you're pinching. Okay, so that's all I have for you for uh, lever systems. Thanks for watching, see you next time.